We've been in this series called uh, Wiser, and we've been talking about wisdom for the last several weeks. We talked about pursuing wisdom, we talked about being wiser with our words, wiser with our decisions. Last week, we talked about being wiser with life's satisfactions, and, we, and Pastor Hooper was up here, and he got into the book of Ecclesiastes where Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, was looking back on his life and saying, you know what, there are only certain, uh, certain few things that we do in life that are truly important. And even only a certain few of those are actually going to bring you satisfaction in life. And I feel like it is a wonderful message that kind of sets up the topic for today. Because if we're looking at life saying, you know what, there's only a couple things in life that truly are important. Then that means that we need to be wise about our time. Wise about the use of our time. So we're making sure we're not spending our life, uh, spending our time away in areas that aren't going to give us any satisfaction, aren't going to help us in any way at all. So today, part five of this is wiser with your time. And I want to go ahead and just invite you to pray with me right off the bat here because I've been fighting a cold this last couple weeks and I want you to pray for me throughout this service that I'm going to be able to continue to talk. I normally don't have a problem with talking for a very, very long time. You can ask my wife. She knows. But uh, uh, I just want a little prayer today that uh, my voice will, will keep up with me today. So if you would, let's pray together. Let's invite God's presence into this place and then we'll jump into this. Heavenly Father, we love you so much. And I just pray right now that um, you would be glorified in this room. God, I know that there's nothing I can say that's special enough or important enough to take the place of what you're doing in each person's life individually and how that God, most importantly, it's about us connecting with you. So I pray, Jesus, we'd see you more today, we'd know you more, we'd love you more, and, uh, and that you would help us today. Be with me. I pray that I wouldn't be a distraction by any means, but I just pray that you would help me with my voice and, and uh, clarity and no coffee and anything like that, God. Uh, we just pray for you to be glorified in this place. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, Job had something that he said in the Old Testament, and it's kind of a premise for what we look at today. He says this, Job 14.5, says this, and you'll see it on the side screens. It says, man's days are determined. You have decreed the number of his months and have set limits he cannot exceed. So Job is talking about time, and he's saying that man has limits on him that he can't Exceed. So Job is saying he actually believes that God has put a limit on every man's life of exactly how long they're, they're going to live, and we can't do anything to change that. We can't, we can't exceed those limits. We only have so much time. In fact, the Bible tells us in Hebrews that man is appointed once to die, that before you were born, God knew the day you were going to die. So we all have a certain amount of time, and time is a limited resource. You only get so much of it. It's like this hourglass. As we turn an hourglass over, we, we recognize that we can see that, the, that this resource is going to go away, and it's going away quickly. But the difference between your life and mine is though we see our time ticking away, we don't know how much of it we actually have. Quick side note on an hourglass. Did you know you can buy an hourglass that's not an hour long? I thought it was really strange because I, I wanted to go to the store and buy an hourglass, ask for an hourglass. No one had an hourglass. They had an hourglass that's a half hour. I'm thought, why don't you call it a half hourglass? That just seems really stupid. And I just recognized as I put this half hourglass up on the table that I don't want it here anymore because now I recognize you all see how long I'm going to go over on my message today. <laughs> it's really awkward, so pay no attention to the glass. We see it, and it's a reminder that our time is a limited resource. You only have so much of it. That's why it's one of your most valuable assets, because you can't exceed your time. You can't exceed your life. You can exceed in other areas. You can overeat. You can overspend. But you can't overlive. And in fact, we can even judge it in different areas of our life, because you can gain more of other assets in your life. You can make more friends. You can make more money, but you can't make more time. And it, it's difficult to even understand this because we can look around us and see the assets that we have, and, and we can count them. And you can count your friends and say, you know what, I have this many friends. You can count your money, but you can't count your time. We don't know how much time we have ahead of us. So time is a very limited resource. And, you know, if, if it's something that is so limited and something that's so valuable, then I think it's important that every one of us stop for a moment and 
especially in a series like this, we ask the question, if it is so valuable, how can I be wiser with my time? I think for every one of us in this room, we've lived enough life where we can look back at some stage where we misspent our time. And you can look back somewhere and say, you know what, I I can't believe I wasted so much time. I can't believe I wasted so much of my life on this season or so much energy on that. And and we can look back and say, you know what, next time I'm going to do it better. Next time I'm not going to waste my time that way. And you might be in a stage of life now where you're married with kids and you're working two jobs or something. And you look back on a stage when you were single and didn't have kids and you think, what was I doing back then? You know, I should have written a book. I could have written a whole series of novels. I should have done something great because it seems like I had so much time and I just don't have much of it anymore. We can all look back and say, you know, if I had it to do over again, I would have treated it different next time. Kind of the premise of this series is that God's word is a gift to us to give us the wisdom that we need so that you and I can make the right decisions this time when it comes to our time. So we don't find ourselves in the future looking back on the season that we're in right now and saying, man, I wish I would have done it better. I wish I would have made better decisions then. But we can look back on this time and say, you know what? Thank God for that Sunday where I put everything in perspective and I started making the right decisions with my time. So I want to just get us all on the same page right off the bat today with four quick observations about time. So if you've taken notes, I want to encourage you to write these down, jot them down in your phone or something. Four quick observations about time. This is what I know about these observations. None of them are not mind-blowing. You're not going to go, oh my gosh, I've never thought of that before. But I think it's important that we, we take these observations, we look at them, we think about them, because if we're truly going to think about how you and I can be wise with our time, we need to understand these things about your time and mine. So we're going to go and jump right into them today with a little bit of time we have left in this, this little hourglass is going to remind me the whole way how much time we have left. So number one, first observation about time. Investing small amounts of time over time is cumulative. Let me say that again. Investing small amounts of time over time is cumulative. Here's another word for it. It's summative. It means it adds up. If you invest small amounts of time over time, that adds up into something great. We all know someone who works out 30 minutes a day, five days a week, and they've done that for so long that you can see the results in their life. And you're like, you know what, that person, they really have had a payoff because it's not like they go to the gym for eight hours a day, but just small increments, they go in for 30 minutes, 20 minutes here, and they've done that so long that it's added up, and now we look at them like, they've got eight-pack abs, they're ripped, you know, they can, they can run without puking on the side of the road. They're the type of person I want to be, you know? We look at those people, and we can recognize this pattern. It's not like a mind-blowing idea, but small amounts of investing time over time is cumulative. It adds up, and it adds up in so many different areas of your life. You can look at it and, and you go, you know what? Eating dinner with your kids is not that big of a deal. It's like 15 minutes, 20 minutes here and there. But if you do that consistently over time and you make a commitment, you know what, uh, for three nights a week, four nights a week, five nights a week, we're going to make sure it's a commitment. We come together as a family and we're going to pour into our kids and work on our relationships. Over time, that adds up into something beautiful and you start to see the payoff in that. We can see it in so many areas of our life when it comes to eating right. Eating right over time pays off. When it comes to your quiet time with God, spending time actually worshiping and reading your Bible for only a few minutes a day, it adds up over time. And I think it's something that we get hung up on because we think, you know what, if I'm going to read my Bible, I need to like read the whole Bible. You know, I need to get through the whole Bible and we'll go through a plan where like, you know, if I, if I can read 30 minutes a day, then I can get through the whole Bible in a year. And there's a lot of people that get burned out on that But we see the people who take small investments. You know, every day I'm going to just give five minutes to reading my Bible. Every day I'm just going to give ten minutes. That adds up over time into beautiful, beautiful outcomes. We see it happens for the person who said, you know what, I'm going to join a small group. I'm going to start investing into relationships. And maybe you've been in a small group and over the last couple of years it's only like 20 minutes a week, or for some small groups, like an hour a week or every other week, and and you start opening yourself up to other people who love God and who love you, and over time, you start to look back on that and realize a year later, two years later, you go, I'm so glad I, I invested into those relationships because now I really have some people I can count on. 
Now I really have some people who will pray for me, who care for me, who love me. And it takes those small investments of time over time. See, it's cumulative. It adds up. See, over time, these things pay off. Here's the thing, though. Doing something one time is generally not going to be life-changing. And that's what we know about, like, if you go to the gym one time, it's not like you're going to have great payoff from that. If you, if you go to church one time, it's generally not going to be life-changing. If you go to a small group one time, it's not going to be life-changing. These are things that you have to do consistently over a long period of time for there ever to be a payoff. Here's two statements about it. There's no benefit to one installment or one investment. There's no benefit to that. And secondly, there's generally no consequence to missing one. This is what I mean. That's why it's so easy that if you are on an exercise plan and you have been working out three, four, five days a week and someone calls you up and says, hey, skip your workout tonight. We've got something real cool going on tonight somewhere else. You can listen to that and you can think, you know what? It's not going to hurt anything if I miss this exercise today. And you know what? You'd be right. It's not going to hurt anything if you miss that exercise today. Missing one one time is generally not going to hurt anything and that goes to almost any area of life. Missing it one time is not going to hurt anything. It's when we get in a pattern of missing it over and over and over again. Missing it one time can start us down the wrong path, but just missing it is not necessarily going to hurt us. And the same is true that making one installment is not going to help anything either. You know, I've never gone to the gym after missing the gym for three months and come out of the gym and someone goes, Ooh, Dan, you're looking smoking hot today, man. You look good. Which, by the way, if you ever see me coming out of the gym, you're welcome to greet me that way. Just so you know. <laughs> but it doesn't happen because, of course not. Like, if, if my, the pattern of my life is so different and then I try to make one investment into it, it it's not going to change anything. Just working out one, one time is not going to change the outcome of my life. So we understand this first principle that investing small amounts of time over time is cumulative. And that brings us to the second point observation about time, that neglect is cumulative as well. Neglect adds up. Neglect is cumulative. So if you do good things over time, you're going to see the payoff for that. But if you neglect the good areas of your life, you're going to see that payoff over time. It's kind of like you could just turn your goals around and you were to say, you know what, I make it a goal. I'm going to write it on the mirror and lipstick. I'm going to write it down. This is going to be my goal. I'm not going to work out this year. And if you follow that plan at the end of the year, you're going to see that, that the results of that added up. It might add up the way it adds up on me, where you see a lot more pounds show up as you look in the mirror. It could add up in different ways. It could add up in health problems. Who knows? But, but we recognize that though the good things we do in life with small investments add up over time, the neglect adds up over time as well. So if our goal is to say, you know what, I'm not going to eat healthy this year. Or my goal is to not invest into my kids. My goal is to not invest into my marriage. My goal is not to invest my money wisely. If if your goal is to go in a way where you're going to add up in a negative way, it's going to happen as well. And here's the trick to it. Neglect is easy. It's not like we just plan on neglecting things. It's not like any of us have ever said, I'm not going to work out this year. I'm not going to do something right this year. We just easily fall into a pattern where we're coasting through life. And and when you coast, anytime you coast, you start coasting downhill. It's easy to coast downhill. So neglect is easy and neglect is costly. I've heard people say this and I've said it myself several times where I'm just too busy for that. I don't have the time to work out right now. I don't have the time to take care of my health. And I I talked to my father this morning. I got permission to share this story with you because if you ever get into a place where you say, you know what, I just don't have time to invest into one of the important areas of my life like health, just wait till you get to the point where something could have been avoided in your life and now you're dealing with the consequences of that where where you're having to pay a lot more into it than you ever did before. And my father would tell me, Dan, I'm just busy. You know, I just don't have the time to go to the gym right now. There's too much going on, too much important stuff going on. And Because I'd harp on him sometimes. When was the last time you got on a treadmill? When was the last time you worked out? He said, I'm just too busy. I got a lot going on. And you know the story when on June 4th this last year, he had his heart attack. And his life changed. So then, as he looks back on it, he said, you know what? I didn't have the time for it. 
he certainly has the time for it now. And in fact, I, I called him like I do almost every morning. I call him around the 7 o'clock hours. I'm getting up and coming into the office. I called him this morning, and, and he's panting real hard. So what you doing? He goes, I'm on the treadmill. What's going on? What do you need? So he never had time for it before. And he realized how that neglect cost him so dearly, and he has time for it now. So now i got my father that every day as I call him up on the phone, I say, hey, what you doing? He's like, I'm on the treadmill. When are you getting your fat butt on the treadmill? <laughs> I'm like, thank you, Dad. That is so encouraging. I feel loved. But he's trying to tell me, you know, you know neglect is cumulative. It adds up. The, the areas we neglect the important things in our life, that ends up paying off. And maybe you've felt this in a certain area of your life. Maybe you've neglected your spiritual life. And at one point, you were reading your Bible. One point you were making it to church regularly. One point you were part of a small group and you were really investing into that. But for whatever reason, you started neglecting it. Maybe you stopped reading your Bible as often, stopped praying as much. You stopped going to church as often and then you find yourself farther and farther and farther away from God. And we can allow ourselves to do that sometimes, but then here's the problem. When crisis hits, we start to realize, oh no, I messed up. Have you ever been in one of those moments where now, you feel far away from God in crisis is hit, and you're going, I just, I, I don't even know how to read my Bible. I don't even know what to pray right now, and I don't have anyone I can call. And you just, you feel the great cost of that neglect. We have to recognize that number one, investing small amounts of time over time is cumulative. Number two, neglect is cumulative. And then number three, random has no cumulative value. See, this is something that you might not have ever thought about before, but it's very important as we talk about being wise with our time. Random has no cumulative value, and this is what I mean by that. There's no cumulative value in the random things we opt to do instead of the important things. So if you were to take in one hand and you were to say, you know what, I'm going to work out 30 minutes a day, five days a week and do that for a couple years, and you were to weigh the benefit of that versus all of the things you did instead of working out, that 30 minutes a day, five days a week, and you would see that in one hand you've got great payoff and in the other hand you have absolutely nothing. And you say, well, wait, there's, I, I did stuff there. It's not like I just skipped the gym and say, well, let's add it up then. What did you do there? What did you do instead of working out? And you say, well, okay, I guess there were some times I had to answer some emails and then, you know, there was those business meetings that went a little bit late and there was that time we went out of town on vacation, and then, and then we had friends come into town, and we went to the lake with them a couple times. And, and you add all that up, and you say, okay, in one hand, if I was very intentional with my time, there's huge payoff. In the other hand, the random things I did instead add up to nothing. Think about it. What did you do instead of working out this year? <laughs> you don't know, Right? And it works in every area of our life. We say, okay, if the goal we're going to have is we're going to spend a lot of time uh, eating together as a family and investing into our relationships that way, if you were to take on one hand all of the things you did instead of that, well, we had this come up and, and I had a coworker get sick, so I went in late on those times. All the things we did instead of that, there, there's absolutely nothing. See, there's no cumulative value of random. And that brings us to the fourth point about time. Fourth point is this. In the areas that matter most, you can't make up for misspent time. In the areas that matter most, you can't make up for misspent time. This is really important. See, in the areas that matter most in life, you can't pull an all-nighter. You can't cram to get it better. We all remember what it was like in school when you weren't paying attention throughout the entire semester, and then that final exam was coming around and you started to panic because you realize it's tomorrow. So I'm sure for most of us, we've been there. Have you ever pulled an all-nighter before? Anyone? It's not just me. But the rest of you are just perfect. Is that what it is? <laughs> you ever pull the all-nighter you're like, oh, I've got to start. And you start studying at 8 p.m. And you never go to sleep. And then the bell rings in the morning. You're still studying. You're cramming, trying to get it together before your final test and your exam. Here's the problem with this is that that works in a lot of areas of our life. You can cram for an all-nighter when it comes to your schoolwork. You can cram and have an all-nighter when it comes to a business meeting that's coming up. Maybe you've got a sales presentation coming up. And we think, oh, I'm not ready for this. So we, we study all night long and we try to make up for misspent time. And then all of a sudden we, we make it through the meeting and one of our coworkers comes up and says, man, that was a great meeting. You did a great job. 
He's thinking, man, I need to procrastinate more uh, more often. I work good under pressure, right? It works in certain areas, but it doesn't work in the areas that matter most. When it comes to your health, when it comes to your spiritual life, when it comes to your relationships, you can't make up for misspent time. In fact, trying to make up for misspent time in many ways can hurt you more than it can ever help you. Let me give you an example of this. Maybe you would be someone who really values eating together as a family. This is something that Amelie and I uh, really value in our family. For like four or five nights a week, we eat together as a family. This started off on accident just because of the stage of life we were in, but we've become very intentional about it where we've made a commitment. It's going to be a way we pour into our daughter's life, so we eat together as a family, and it has helped us in our relationship so much. It's just 15, 20 minutes a day, but, but we made that commitment, and maybe you'd say, you know what, there's been a lot of meals we've missed, and, 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 and there's been a lot of misspent time, we failed in this area, and we want to make up for it. You can't make up for the areas of misspent time by cramming and pulling an all-nighter. So if you were to say, okay, kids, uh, listen, tomorrow's Saturday morning, and instead of, you know, I, I don't want you to do your normal routine, so just clear your schedule, and we're going to have breakfast tomorrow morning, and, and I want you to clear your schedule, because we're going to stay together for like eight hours at the breakfast table to make up for all of those meals we missed. Now, how would that go, right? Because it probably caused you a lot more damage than it would help, right? Because you can't make up for misspent time in the areas that matter most. Here's the important thing we need to understand. When it comes to your health, when it comes to your relationships, when it comes to the most important areas of our life, it takes the small investment over time, and that adds up. It doesn't take the the, the random, I'm going to try real hard to make up for this. And we need to understand that, because if if Solomon was saying in Ecclesiastes, listen, there's only a couple things that you're going to do in life that are truly important, then we have to recognize that those things are, are things we have to be incredibly intentional about. We can't just say, you know, I, I, I'm, going to, I, I'm going to make up for all this area I failed. Here's another area I'm sure you guys have done. Have you ever done the mega workout? Anyone, just be honest. What the mega workout is if you haven't worked out in like six months and then you go to the gym all day long. Has anyone ever done the mega workout? Is it just me? You know, January 1st, there's a lot of people doing the mega workout. You show up at the gym and, and you, you've done it before where you get in line behind someone who they look like they know what they're doing. They're kind of ripped. They're sweating. So they must be doing something right. So you get in line behind them and you start following them. And you go to every exercise equipment and you work out there and you do it twice, right? And then that guy goes and, and you go sit down for a while and you get a protein drink. And then you go do the whole thing again because you're like, I haven't been in the gym in six months. So eight hours today should pay off, Right? And then you go home and you go to bed and the next day your body sends you a message. (laughs) And that message is, you're an idiot, right? (laughs) You ever done that? Because you can't make up for misspent time. I did this uh, just a couple weeks back. It's been a long time since I've been out uh, hiking or working out and I kind of felt guilty about it. So I called Amelie and I asked her, hey, would you help me with the workout tomorrow? Because I don't like to go to the gym. Uh, I like to be outside. So I said, would you drop my truck off at the top of this trailhead, and I'm going to go on this long hike tomorrow. And, and she's like, you sure about this? That's a big hike. And, it's, it like, and I'm thinking, well, it's been so long, I need to like make up. So I, I went out there, and she dropped me off on the other side of this trailhead. I got my truck at the top. I'm climbing uh, almost 3,000 feet over seven miles. I'm thinking, this is going to pay me back for all that time that I've spent on the couch. Now, the first couple miles, I'm feeling good. I'm sweating. I got my headphones in. I'm listening to music. It's doing good. By mile three or four, I'm starting to get tired, and I stop and eat a snack because that's what fat guys do on the trail. So, <laughs> so I eat my snack, and I'm, like, I'm ready to go, and the trail starts getting steeper, and I, I start heading up, and through my headphones, I keep hearing this noise. It's click, click. Click, click. Click, click. And and I pull my headphones out, and I realize that's my left knee every time I take a step. I'm like, well, that's new. I'm five miles up the trail. I still got two more miles to go, and I'm starting to think, I might have to call a helicopter to get me out of here. I went home after this was over, and I couldn't get out of bed for two days. I'm like, 
that didn't help me. Being in bed for two more days did not help me sitting on the couch for weeks and weeks at a time. It, here's a, you can't make up for misspent time in these areas. And, and you can't, here's what I really hope you don't do. I hope you don't go, you know what, there, I need to work on my spiritual life. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go home today and I'm going to read the entire New Testament. No, that, that's not going to help either. The Bible's saying to be wise with your time. You have, you have to recognize a couple things. And see, if this is the way God made the world, if this is the, the world you and I live in, that you can't make up for misspent time, that the things we do add up, whether it's good or bad, that random has no cumulative value, if these things are all true, then what does God have to say about it? And I want to take a look at a verse before we leave today, because this is in Ephesians chapter 5. Paul is talking, Ephesians 5 to 15, and he says this about this whole concept. He says, therefore... Be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, and he says, verse 16, making the most of your time. So get this, of all the topics he could talk about, he's saying if you want to live a wise life, if not an unwise life, but a wise life, he could have talked about our diet, he could have talked about our investments, he could have talked about anything like that, but he's saying if you want to be wise, you have to make the most of your time, and then he goes on and says this, because the days are evil. What does that mean? That seems really strange now. He's saying, you got to make the most of your time because the days are evil. Well, he's talking about the culture that you and I live in. He's talking about the fact that, you know, if I spend my time the way my culture would have me spend my time, or let me say it this way. If I spend my time the way my appetites want me to spend my time, I'm going to waste a lot of my time. I'm going to waste a lot of my life. And this is why. Because our culture, he's saying, you got to be careful about this because the days are evil. Our culture and your appetites, these things are all about the now. It's all about what do I want to do now? What, how am I going to feel now? And see, the wise thing to do is for us to look forward into the future. So that's why the culture will say, you know what, it's okay if you miss this exercise today. It's okay if you don't read your Bible today. It's okay if you miss church this weekend. It's okay if you don't eat with your family tonight because, oh, after all, it's just one day. It's not important. No big deal. Just one investment. See, that's why the Bible says we have to be careful because if we're not careful, if we're not very intentional about our time, our time is going to start to get wasted. And they'll say, okay, well, I guess it is just one day. Who cares? And we... We coast through one day, and then it turns to coasting through day two, and day three, and day four. And if you've ever been on a bike, you know you only coast downhill. And if we're going to be the type of people that, that don't go through life coasting downhill and looking back going, how did I waste so much of my time? How did I waste so much of my life? We have to be very clear here, and we need to start asking ourselves some questions. So here's the challenge for you today is to ask you today, where do you need to begin making consistent deposits of time? I would encourage you for just a moment, ask yourself that question, because maybe as you've been in this service, God has been kind of whispering to you, there's an area of your life. Where do you need to be making small deposits of time consistently? Is it your spiritual life? Have you been neglecting your spiritual life? Have you been neglecting reading your Bible? Have you been neglecting making a commitment to be a part of a small group or, or, or being at church every week or being part of a class in the, in the midweek? Maybe it's in your health. And God's talking to you today and going, you know what, you need to eat right. You need to start exercising. You don't know how much time is left in your jar. You, you need to start paying attention to this. Maybe there's an area. Maybe it's with your kids. And your kids are growing up and they're getting to the point where, where their time is becoming more valuable and you don't have as much time with them now. Maybe, maybe it's right now we look at that and go, I need to start making some consistent deposits. Where do you be, begin to make consistent deposits in your life? That also causes us to ask the question, where do you need to stop investing time? Because you only have so much time. So for you to say, I, I, I need to start doing these things because they're very valuable means we're probably going to have to start saying no to some other things. So maybe the question's asked better like this. I've got it on the side screens. What things do you need to start saying no to for now? Because we recognize we all go through different seasons of life. 
We recognize there are times where you have more time and there are times where you have less time. Here's an example of where it's happened in my life. Uh, as I look back, I recognize before Amelie and I had kids, uh, I used to be involved in a lot of different hobbies. In fact, I've always been an outdoor person. Some of the things I was involved in, I'd spend a lot of time on the weekend shooting trap or I'd go fly fishing and I actually had the full setup at my house where I would spend time uh, just sitting in front of the TV and working on tying flies to go fly fishing. And it was incredibly time consuming. And it was fine. There was nothing wrong with it. It took up a lot of my time. And I didn't see that there was anything wrong with it. And really, there's nothing wrong with it. But one day, we brought home our first baby girl from the hospital. And I started recognizing that I didn't have time for everything anymore. And and I started realizing very quickly there were things in my life that took up a lot of time. and It was fun, but it's not necessarily important. It's not one of those things that's going to bring me life satisfaction. So I had, to, I had to finally make the decision where I told Amelie one day, I think I'm going to box all this stuff up and put it in storage because I don't have the time anymore. In fact, I don't want to take the time away from our daughter and I don't want to take the time away from you. I don't have the time anymore to do this. So for that season in life, I had to say, okay, you know what, this is okay in other seasons, it's probably going to be okay again in the future, but for that season in life, I had to say, for now, the answer is no. And I boxed up all that stuff. Fast forward 11 years. This year, both of my daughters have completed their hunter education course. Both of my daughters have their guns ready to go and are counting down the days until turkey season opens. So some of you might be jealous going, oh, you get to take your kids. Well, here's what I look back on that because I've always been an outdoor person. And I, started to, I started to think about this really sobering for a moment. Because I went, I wonder if I didn't put down all this hobby and all this stuff on the side where nothing was wrong with it. If I didn't put it down and start investing into my girls at that time, would they even want to go into the woods with me right now? I had to say, okay, according to the season that I'm in in life right now, is this something that I need to say no to? Because we've got to ask ourselves the question, if we're going to be wise with our time, we can't just coast through life. You have to be intentional and ask yourself, first off, is there an area where you need to start investing consistently, and is there an area where you need to start saying no? To close this out, i got one more illustration. I know many of you have seen this illustration. We've used it at our, church, at our church over the years. In fact, it's probably been about five years since we've used it on this main stage. But I love this illustration because it points out the fact that every one of us have 24 hours in a day. That's what this jar represents. And in a 24-hour day, we have a lot of things that we need to try to cram into that day. And, and we have in front of us the big rocks. These are the important things. Like we talked about last week. Uh, from Ecclesiastes, there's your relationship with God is one of the big things in life. There's the relationship with your, your spouse and your kids is important. There's your health. There's some big things that we deal with in our life. But then we have some other things. We have things that we deal with in life that we have to do them. They take up a lot of time, but they're not necessarily important. We all have to go to the grocery store. We have to get gas for our car. We've got to run errands. We've got to do those things. They're important, but, well, they're not really important, but we have to do them, and they take up a lot of time. And then we have the sand of our life. These are the things that are not important at all and take up a lot of time. This is sitting in front of the television, surfing the Internet. We like to do these things, and they take up a lot of time, but they're not necessarily important. Here's what happens if you're not intentional with your time. If you decide to not be wise, like Solomon would say with your time, or like Paul would say, is we go into every day and we say, you know what, there's some things I want to do. I want to watch that show on TV. I want, I want to um, spend some time surfing the internet and find out what my friends are doing on Facebook. I want to do all that. So, so we cram all the things we want to do in the day first. And that fills up quite a bit of our 24 hours. And then we go, oh my gosh, we didn't get gas. We need to go to the grocery store. And there's all these other little things that are important. And they start taking up our time. And we start trying to cram those into our day as well. And then we get to the end of the day. And this is where guilt starts to kick in for many of us in this room. Is we start to realize, wait a minute. I didn't spend any time with God today. I didn't get up and I didn't read my Bible. I got I to gotta get some time in with God today. So we say, okay, I'm not going to do anything. Else. I'm going to start off oh, by spending time with God. And I guess I can't fit that whole rock in there. And then we start to look and go, wait a minute. I didn't invest into my kids today. And the health thing, I guess, that, that certainly is getting pushed to another day. I don't have time to go to the gym now. I mean, I just, and we look at our day and we went, 
wow, there went another day where I didn't get anything accomplished. That matters. I did a lot. You know, I spent a lot of time on the internet. I spent a lot of time watching TV. That's, that's the way so many of us live our life. But what the Bible would say the wise thing to do is, is we look at those things that are most important in our life and say, you know what, I've got a relationship with God. So first and foremost, I need to make time for this. I'm going to be intentional about it. I'm going to say, I'm going to get up in the morning, and before I do anything else, I'm going to spend a little bit of time, just 5, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, praying, reading my Bible. And then, you know what, God's blessed me with a family. So I'm going to start pouring into my relationship with my kids, with my wife. I'm going to invest into them a little bit. And, and then, you know what? He's given me a body. I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to, I'm going to eat right today. I'm going to make sure that I make it to the gym. And we fit those big things in first. Here's what's really cool about when you and I make a decision to fit the big and important things in life. Is a lot of us feel like for us to do that, we're going to have to make sacrifices with everything else. Because if we try to do the unimportant things first, we have to make sacrifices. But we see the Bible shows us that if we make a commitment to do the important things first, then we come around and go, you know what, I got some important things I got to do. I got to run errands, got to get my kids to soccer practice, uh, got to go buy groceries, got to do all this stuff. And, and we fit it in and you would go, you know what, wait a minute. I was able to get the important stuff done, I was able to get the stuff I need to get done. And, and then now, I've got room for the things I want to do. So now I guess I do have time at the end of the day where I can go and I can, I can start to surf the internet and look on Facebook and I can start to um, watch the TV shows I want to and we get to the end of the day where we go, you know what, I was able to get everything in I needed to get in. And you know the difference? It was the commitment to be wise with your time, to be intentional. So here's what I want to do before we go. I want to invite you to bow your heads and close your eyes. And I want to invite you very personally right now to pray a personal prayer and to ask God this question. God, is there an area I need to start making small investments into? And allow him to answer that to you right now. God might be whispering an answer specifically to you right now. Yeah, there's this relationship. There's, there's your health. There's time on the treadmill. So let's pray right now and let's ask God to forgive us for not investing into that. So in your own words right now, say, God, I'm sorry that I haven't been taking my time seriously. And I haven't been doing this the wise way. So forgive me, God, that I haven't been taking the most important things and investing into them. Then I want you to ask your God this question. God, is there an area of my life where I need to stop? Spending my time. And this might sting a little bit because we all have our hobbies, we have our things we like to do, and maybe we've just entered a season in our life where you've been there for a while where you might have been like I was, where fly fishing's fun, but now you're at a point where you go, I, I think I'm going to have to say no to that for that season. If God is starting to tell you an area of your life to say no to, <clears throat> I want to encourage you to make that commitment. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would help us become wiser with our time. I pray that you'd help us to be more intentional with our time because we don't want to be the people that waste it. We don't want to get through life and realize, you know, we never did the things that were important and we've lost relationships, we've lost health, we've lost finances, we've lost so many things. But God, we want to be wise with our time this time so that we can receive the benefits and the blessings and the rewards that you have for all of us. So God, I thank you for today. And I thank you for this very practical message. And I pray that in every person in this room that you would just illuminate some truth to us. So as we leave here today, we could be the type of people who spend our time wisely. And it's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, guys, let's give our God a shout of praise before we go today. He's good.